Greetings friends, it's Alexa again and this time with a Season 5 starter guide for the absolute beginner. Like if you've played Diablo 4 already then this video is probably not for you. I'm gonna go a little bit over what class is probably the best, but this is more geared towards people who've never played it and are thinking of, or just started let's say that, and thinking of getting into it. So let's first start actually with what class to play. Before this season the best class was always Barbarian, it always was when they buffed. A class you still played barbarian that's what it was now barbarian got nerfed not crazy but it did get nerfed noticeably i would say um and instead <clears throat> sorcerer got buffed a lot necromancer got buffed decently and druid got buffed but the biggest buff really is sorcerer and from what we've seen from everyone else running in their youtube channels running um polls polls what class they want to play it's always sorcerer so everyone's gonna play sorcerer mostly it's kind of crazy this seems to be the strongest class right now <clears throat> and this is because they changed pretty much every single unique in the game right but especially the sorcerer got some really great changes and, and especially thinking of two builds one of them is the fireball build and the other one is the blizzard build both of which i've played already on season four i'm still not entirely sure which one i'll be playing but i think i'll go for the fireball um, because it's just, they changed a lot of it and it seems cool. However, the fireball has the issue that you actually need at least two uniques to make it really work. And this is going to be the gloves of the illuminator over here. And where is the other one? Yeah, the Zephyr Endless Rage. So you need the gloves for sure, because they help you now. Um, you get two mana when the fireball explodes and it bounces as it travels. That does way more damage, like way more. It's a big thing that changes it. So it hops like this and does damage and you gain mana back when it explodes. And the self Vendor's Rage, which now every third cast of a fireball launches two additional projectiles. So it sort of splits them up into three projectiles and you gain a lot more projectile speed and you chance to cast twice and plus six to fireball. So these are crazy good. So if you don't know what to start with, start with the fireball build. I'm going to give you in a second. Actually, you just go to maxroll.gg, right? That's what you do. Maxroll.gg, as you see, slash d4. You go to build guides over here. And you go to sorcerer. That's your, your what you want to play. And then you go for leveling. That's what you want. You can also look for end game, what you want to play in the end game. But leveling is, of course, how, you, how to get there. And there's four leveling guides you can choose from. Fireball, I think, is actually the best to start with. Um, personally, that's probably what I'm going to It's also S tier, yeah, as it says. Um, and then end game you're gonna go for oh here where is it the fireball sorcerer end game and it was the blizzard i will also make build guides about these myself didn't get to it yet obviously because we don't have the new build yet but um this is what you want the other one is the blizzard as i mentioned because of this nice item where is it the blue rose this got changed because it now has this ring over here, it now has ice spike damage up to 350% and chance for ice spikes to explode twice. It's now an implicit on this item. And how Blizzard works it is it casts a bunch of ice spikes and they explode. That's how it deals most of its damage. So this seems like it's a lot of DPS for these two builds. I personally only play Sorcerer anyway, mostly a little bit of Necromancer every now and then. I might even play through it this season, I don't know, but as a Sorcerer, it's either the Blizzard or the Fireball. The Chain Lightning also looks good, but I wouldn't recommend this for newcomers. Um, this one is pretty much the easiest to start with. Generally, if you don't know how the game works, Max Roll on the Diablo 4 section has a lot of interesting, useful, powerful things you want to do. Now, the first thing you want to actually do when you get into the game is you don't want to play the campaign, right? Unless you want to play it again for some reason, I don't know. But you want to just go straight to leveling and you want to skip the campaign. You can do this in the intro screen. On the right side when you make a new character it says skip campaign so it goes straight just to the map as it is as you know it and the the monsters have your level so it's not like you're gonna die immediately you can still do it just fine very very simple now a key thing i wanted to mention is when you find items especially when you are starting new you want to actually destroy most of them most of the times because it gives you these as you can tell here in the orange, at the, in the middle section, call skills cast at or above 100 mana. It gives you these, um, what are they called, not affixes. It gives you these aspects, right? And these are legendary aspects. 
And you can imprint these on other items, because what you will be doing in this game is, you will find a good weapon, for example this one. Let's say this is good, it's actually not that crazy, but let's just say it is a good one. And, but then you have to sort of, have to have these aspects, which are the orange one at the bottom again, right? This one. Deal 30% increased damage to vulnerable enemies while you have a barrier. That's a very powerful aspect. We need for some builds, or many builds even, to happen, or like to work at all. So what you want to do is you find an item that has good stats, like this has 140 intelligence, it has maximum life, it has damage over time. And then what you want to do is you want to throw that aspect on this item you found on another one. But you have to find it first, right? You can either do this with dungeons. If we go to the map, there are some dungeons and they usually have this, this chest right next to the symbol, this chest over here. And you can also say if you hover over it, Rewarded on first completion, aspect of retaliation. Your call skills deal up to 15% increased damage. This is druid only, so you get this aspect for the druid if you finish this dungeon the first time. Okay? This is how you get these aspects, for example. You can also see this in your collections. Codex of Power, this is the aspects and recipes. And here you see all your aspects you've already found. Very important. These are really what make the build really strong these have key things that make the build much better so it can actually do damage you will also find your tempering recipes in here you will also need these you find these through the items and if you play through the game you will see that when you don't have this there's an icon next to it that says if you destroy this item you will gain that aspect and it will go into your sort of stash so to speak same with transmog works exactly the same as the transmog thing. so the items look different so you want to you wanna pick up every item you find and you want to destroy it so you get these aspects, right? That's what you want to do. This is also why, are, why the bosses drop so many items so you get all these aspects so you can actually build them. Because later you actually want to throw these on the items and if you don't have the aspect, the build is much worse. So that's a key thing I learned the hard way later, the hard way later in this game. Another very important thing is, if you click on stats and materials, is your resistances. Like these are, for example, pretty bad. 70 is the cap. This means, as it says down here, reduces incoming fire damage by 70%. This applies to both direct fire damage and burning damage over time. For example, if you go to higher world tiers, right? If you go to, yeah, higher world tiers, this uh, resistance is also reduced. It says it down here, you currently have 155 fire resistance for bonuses and minus 50 from penalties, which is, for example, the world tier 4. And you are a minus 37 away from your maximum fire resistance, so we're good with this one, that's why it's green. You want to have these green, because that is your tankiness. This is the same in Last Epoch, same thing exactly. you got to look in resistances. This comes later, I would say, at like level 50 plus. You have to think of resistances. Before that, not so much. You won't have the gear anyway to make it happen properly, but this is what you want to focus on. Later, late game. Then, as always, what you want to always do, this is actually very simple in Diablo 4, you want to stack your main, your main attribute. If you're a sorcerer, this is intelligence. If you're a barbarian, it's strength. And you want to stack this, because see, this is the highest one of almost 1500, and everything else is pretty low. Because this means damage, right? As it says here, increases skill damage by 147%, and increases resistances also by 36%, in this case. So stack that. To build up your damage. You see this in your items, 135 intelligence, 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 intelligence. So you, you stack that, this is what makes your build much stronger. Now the key thing many forget all the time is you want to look at your consumables and you want to have these elixirs, right? Because they give you increased experience. You always want to have these running. You want to you go here and click, right click on it and then you see this icon here, this one. It says, experience increased by 8%. This helps you to level way faster through, through the campaign, or like not the campaign, leveling up to level 50 or whatever. Always make sure you have one of these running. This lasts for like, I don't even know how long, it doesn't say it. Oh yeah, 30 minutes. So if you play for 30 minutes, you, you throw this in, you gain experience much faster and go in level much faster. Very, very important. Another key thing is your renown. If you go to the map, you see at the at the top here, you see the renown. It says it here. The number of I don't even have this maxed out here. Um, and if you click W, you see the rewards, and you all want to have at least the first three, because the third one gives you one skill point, one extra skill point. You need to max these to even maximize the builds and get the most damage out of it. 
And this is, we have one of these for each area, or for each zone, Fractured Peaks, Gosglin, etc. And you want to have at least the first three. Again, skill point, potion capacity, skill point. The obols are not that important, Perkin points later are cool, but you don't really need it. And the first three are easy to farm, you always want to have these maxed out. You do this by unlocking all the waypoints, by finding all the areas, side dungeons, strongholds. These give a lot of bonus, so do these. Basically, just going through the whole map. Side quests are not that important. I see I didn't do much of these. And the Altars of Lilith, because they also give you buffs like intelligence or willpower, whatever. Um, consistent buffs that stay with you. So you want to find these. You can Google that. There's maps online, Diablo 4 Altars of Lilith map, where you see where all these are actually on the map. As you can see, the, the gray ones are already found and it says claimed. And it will show you on the map where all these are. Basically, the renown means you have to really discover the entire map. You have to once have to bin through in the entire map and see everything. Most of it you find through the campaign anyway, but not all of it. See, there are some, some spots I haven't found yet. Unlock all these waypoints by clicking on them once. Do all the side dungeons. And find all the altars of Lilith. Because this, again, the skill points are important. They give you a lot of damage. You need these. And many forget about this. It's very, very important. Now, the key thing is, if you have someone you play with, definitely try to level with them because that's much faster. You gain bonuses if you are in a party, so you want to do this as well. And as you can tell, there's a lot of people around, especially when the new season starts. That's also very, very helpful. Key thing if you're playing Sorcerer is you don't want to forget about your enchantments. You see this if you hit Shift C, then you see your your bar set up. You can change the out of ready skills you want to have in your bar. But the key thing is the enchantments. Right? Because they make your skills even better. So you pull one of these and pull it in here, then it would now enchant this one. You can actually do it for now, because why not? And it says here, enchantment effect at the bottom, right? Upon getting hit, you have a 5% chance to apply ice armor. So it's sort of auto-cast when you're being hit 5% of the cases. This one does evade is replaced with a short-range teleport on a 15-second cooldown. This version of teleport does not make you unstoppable. So that's basically... Instead of a weight, you now have a teleport that also does the damage. Right? These are the enchantment effects. You don't want to miss these. You miss out on these. They are super, super powerful. They're actually so powerful, they removed one because the sorceress initially had three of these. Now it's only two. But you don't want to miss out on that. Other than that, you just go on the map. You, you fight your monsters. You kill things. You want to play the health head a lot because um, that also helps you to, to level faster. And then... Definitely play with build guides. As I mentioned, check out Max Roll. They have leveling guides. Definitely get those because they help you a lot to actually get your character up to speed fast and then you can do the higher levels. Or if you just want to chill, you can just play the campaign. That's all up to you, but the campaign takes very long, which is great, obviously, but um, it does take a while. So however you want to play, maybe you want to figure out your own builds. That's also cool. But if you want to get to level fast and check out the, the newest items, find all these uniques, then you gotta level up much faster and you do this by using leveling guides. So this is again just a very basic understanding and Sorcerer seems to be very strong. Everyone's playing Sorcerer, maybe because she's been the poster child for so long that never, never got any buffs. Now she actually finally seems good, so everyone's playing that. Whatever. Let me know in the comments what you are playing, what you think of this, and if it helped you, or what you want to see more in the future, whatever. And I will see you in Sanctuary.